Whenever you do any work on the tail surfaces or the wing of a plane, you'll usually have to do some work on the controls. If you hang a new wing, for instance, you'll have to connect up the aileron and adjust its cables and alignment. Then if you do much of anything to the tail surfaces, you will have a job with either the elevator or rudder controls, or both of them. Any work you do with the controls is particularly important. The pilot has to count on them when he's in the air. Now with the elevators, the first thing is to see that stick action is free and even. Then you inspect the cables inside the fuselage for fraying or any other trouble. There are several inspection holes and they're all supposed to be used. If the cables are all right, you can go ahead and connect them up. That means using the specified kind of bolt, washer, nut and cotter. When the nut is on and cottered, the turnbuckle must move freely. The other cable is connected the same way, but here the safety wire is usually off the turnbuckle because you have to remove it to detach the cables easily. When you're sure both turnbuckles are free on the horns, the alignment of the elevators can be checked with a straight edge. You'll need a helper at the cabin First have him set the stabilizer to neutral position and check it yourself to see it's in neutral. Now when your helper puts the stick in neutral, the straight edge will tell you whether the elevators line up with the stabilizers. Now you see here the elevators are low, so the upper cable has to be taken up. First you take the safety wire off the turnbuckle When the wrapped ends are unwound, cut the wire before you take it off, so it won't get used again by mistake. Now, when you're sure the number of threads showing will be within regulations, you can let out the lower turnbuckle a couple of turns. If you don't have a regular turnbuckle wrench like this, almost any kind of pin through the barrel makes a good one. When you shorten the upper cable, you take the turnbuckle in the same number of turns you let out already on the lower one to keep the tension balanced. Okay. Then you can recheck the alignment. Once isn't enough, though, so you'd better drop the elevators and try again to be sure. Then you'll want to check their travel and alignment by eye. Sometimes things will show up here you won't catch any other way. Next, you have to level the plane to measure the angular travel of the elevators. Put an adjustable tripod under the tail wheel bracket and place your level along the left upper longeron in the cabin. Have a helper adjust the tripod until the plane is level fore and aft. Now set your bevel protractor to the specified number of degrees for the downward limit first. Set the protractor on the elevator at its center line and make sure its travel is within the limits for the plane. Then reset the bevel protractor, raise the elevator as far as it'll go, and measure the up limit of travel. Tap the protractor ring until the bubble is on center and you'll have an accurate measurement. Okay. Now you'll want to see for yourself that stick movement is right. 
You'll feel any sluggish response or over-tightness when you move the stick and watch the elevators at the same time. All right, then, you can go ahead and safety the turnbuckles. Now, use only soft brass wire and always use new wire. Now, first, it goes through the turnbuckle barrel and the eye at each end. Then it comes back over itself, and you wrap it tightly around the ends of the turnbuckle from three to five turns. The more, the better. Cut off the extra wire close to the turnbuckle. Safety the lower cable the same way. Now, when you've inspected the job and oiled the hinges, the elevators are done. When you connect up the rudder cables, you'll follow the same kind of procedure. Inspect them, then connect them to the horns with a specified type of bolts. Now remember the rule for aircraft bolts here, too. Set the bolts with the nuts down. When both cables are connected and you're sure they move freely on the horns, go to the cabin and inspect the rudder pedals thoroughly. Make sure they're firmly attached to the floorboards and there's nothing loose in the pedal assembly either. Now to check rudder alignment, swing it from side to side and see how it lines up when you let it go. Now here it's off to the right. Now go back to the cabin and see if the pedals are in neutral position. If they are, like this, and the rudder is out of line, you'll have to adjust the cables. First, let out the right cable. Then take up the turnbuckle in the left cable the same number of turns. Okay, this time it lines up all right. And make sure those pedals are still in neutral now. Then test their reaction. It should take a firm push to move them, and they should return smoothly and quickly to neutral position. Next, you'll have to check the rudder stops. It should hit both right and left stops and move easily and evenly through its limits of travel. Then you can safety the cables. Now, this job is important, so get it right. New soft brass wire through the barrel through the eyes in opposite directions, back and around the ends, cut off the ends, and you can be sure that turnbuckle won't loosen up until you want it to. Finally, you inspect all your work, make sure it's right, then you can oil the hinges and call it a job. The ailerons are a little more complicated than the elevators and rudder, but the first step is to see the stick moves freely just the same. Then you inspect the cable and the wing with the flashlight. Use all the inspection holes and run your fingers over as much of the cable as you can reach, too. You'll be extra thorough near the pulleys, of course. Then you get in the cabin and connect up the top cable and cotter it. On your way to the lower cable, you examine the fair lead rings on the front lift strut. Be sure they're all right. Then uncoil the lower aileron cable and inspect it. You're looking for frayed spots here, so protect your fingers by running cotton waste or a rag over the cable. Now this is the kind of thing you'll find if the rag sticks and it means a new cable.
When you get the new one, you'll have to inspect it thoroughly, too, to make sure the fittings are right and all the strands are sound. Then you can string the new cable through the fair lead rings along the strut. Just be sure here that you lead the turnbuckle end of the cable out toward the aileron. Now you pass the cable over the pulley and slide the pulley into its bracket. Put in the pin with cotter hole down and cotter it securely. Now you'll have to install the fiber fair leads in each of the rings along the strut. Now this one is a split type. First you slide in one half, then you tap in the other. Lock both halves in the fitting with a snap ring. Then you can go on and run the new cable in through the side of the fuselage. Go to the cabin and install the pulley on the floor. First you install the bolt and cotter it. Then make sure the pulley turns freely. Next, you'll have to get under the plane to connect the cables to the torque tube horn. Put the shackle on the new cable and connect them both to the horn. Turn the shackle bolt so you can get at the cotter points to bend them down. All right. Connect up the cable to the lower aileron horn and make sure it's free to move. You'll need the long hook now to fish the other cable out of the wing. Pull it through the pulley opening. Thread it over the pulley. and you can install the pulley with its pin in the bracket. Don't forget to safety the pulley now. Then before it's connected, you'll have to adjust the turnbuckle. Make sure the threads showing are equal at both ends and line it up with the horn. Then you stick the cable through the wing opening cover and you can connect the cable to the top aileron horn. Now you make sure both cables move freely on the horn and cotter the nuts on the shackled bolts. Now you center the stick in the cabin. Don't guess at it. Measure the distance from the stick to the side of the cabin so you'll be sure it's on center. All right? Then check the alignment of the right aileron and make sure it's within the specified tolerance. Now here it's all right. Then you do the same with the left wing, and here you've got too much droop. Now first, let out the cable on the lower horn a couple of turns.
then take up the cable on the upper horn the same number of turns. Do this until the aileron lines up right with the trailing edge. Then you have to see that the tension on the cables is right. Taut, but not too tight. And this part of the job will be done. Make sure the plane is level fore and aft. Then take the bevel protractor and measure the travel of the aileron to see that it's within the angular limit set in the specifications for this make and model of airplane. You can correct any error in the angular travel of the aileron by setting the stop nuts at the torque tube in or out. Adjust them until your measurements show the aileron is within limits. Now go back to the cabin and test the stick. Watch the ailerons at the same time to see that they travel correctly. Then you can go ahead and safety the turnbuckles. Your final checkup is always important, but especially so when you've worked on the controls. Make it a thorough inspection of every part, nuts and cotters, pulleys, and every inch of cable. When you're satisfied, go ahead and start installing the covers. On the pulley in the cabin, on the inspection openings, and on the top of the wing. When they're all placed, oil the hinges and ride up the job. Now remember, you can only repair a plane if you're a certificated mechanic or working under the supervision of one, and only a certificated mechanic can sign the log.